Hi folks, morning. Uh, mm, quite, my, uh, quite a cloudy over in London now. I'm always influenced by, by what's going on outside my loft windows. So clouding up. It was a good start, but a big, big, big cold for this time of year now. Uh, that's a spring. April showers by May flowers. <laughs> I think that's gone by the board. Anyway. I've got a different palette here. This is a smaller one I bought about the same time as I bought the big one about 35 years ago. <coughs> right. uh, so we've got uh, Cad Yellow. Uh, I think it's Cad, yeah, it's Cad, Cad Yellow. Uh, uh, yellow Ochre, Cadmium Red, Ultramarine, Burst Sienna, plus Black, or well, plus Payne's Grey and White. Uh, if you want to make uh, ultramarine a bit darker, you can you can always add a bit of burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, or a bit of Payne's grey. I use it a lot in, in the watercolours, the mix between Payne's grey. So don't use black in the watercolours. Uh, black and uh, and, and uh, the ultramarine. It's a quick way to make a dark a dark blue. Somebody mentioned indigo, well indigo I've used in watercolour, it's a bit of a cold, cold blue, but uh, try it, try, try it at different blues. What I would suggest is if you don't want loads of different blues, loads of different reds, loads of different yellows on your palettes at the same time because you'll get confused and you'll end up trying everything and it just won't work. It takes a lot of experience to use uh, quite a few colours. That's why I use use the four or five, well, got five basic colours here that suit most of the English landscape. Uh, right, okay, now um, I'm going to give the paper a little bit of a spray. It's quite, it's a 200 pound uh, bit of watercolour paper, a bit of arches on it. No, or Saunders Waterford. It might even be Buckingford, but it doesn't really matter what it is. It's got a good coat of primer on it. That's PVA glue. Uh, now, um, PVA glue usually comes quite thick, so I dilute it quite a bit, but not so that it's, it's running all over the place. You've, you've got to experiment to see what works, and a couple of coats would be ideal, and you can always put one on the back to, to straighten the whole thing out. But this uh, so far hasn't hasn't buckled. Uh, but it's all the glue. Oh, that's water down. <laughs> it's just like glue. Well, PVA is glue. Uh, right. Now well, let's get, uh, get a bit of a bit of paint spray. Um, A bit of paint spray mixed with a bit of burnt sienna. Right, well let's just put that on sort of a bit like a, a Dorset hill with trees on the top. Similar here. Right, clean the brush. I'm only using one brush. One brush and palette knife. Or maybe a couple of crayons over the top, like the Danish painter. She put me onto the idea. I just bought three of them just to try them out. Um, right, uh, we want, want quite a bit of uh, nice uh, light colour. Uh, just bum, bum it in. Well, it's, uh, different colours in these abstracts. And you can just go over, glaze over. It's a very exciting way of painting. You know, you, you're, you're not, I'm, well, I'm not working from, from a, any reference material. I'm just working from 
something that I've got in my mind, which is nothing. Because I, I just put in the black or the paint spray and, and then just take it from there, just develop the painting. And being a quick dry, you can make things quite dry quite quickly, even though you can go over them. Sorry, I forget what I'm talking to myself about. A bit of that yellow in there. Nice lights. So it's a tiny bit of paper, it's just an off cut. But you don't waste them, you can make little gems out of them, Christmas cards, all sorts of thing, things. I wish I'd be about in there. Yeah, let's cover all that up. Bit of water. Just mix all the colours, they will mix well together. Right, let's do a little bit of uh, <coughs> stuff on the horizon, on the uh, on the sky. So we'll just give it a bit of a wet. Let's we could go for a bit of drama here. This would be too outrageous with the, with the sky, just bung a bit of that shadow in. But, I, but you just build the thing up gradually. Uh, it looks an absolute mess at the moment, which is fine. A bit of burnt sienna in there. And a bit of, bit of blue in that, grey, a bit of white. Quite rough this paper, as you can probably hear. I don't often use this palette, I use it because you can see what I'm 
doing? Green. That paint's great. Paint's great. Makes a, a lovely green. Go back to the sky, it's buckling a bit now because I've only given it one coat of the primer. But the acrylic itself is is becoming a primer because it's a good it a plastic sheet. And I I varnish these with uh, if they're any good with uh, my dilute PVA glue. Brings out the colour a bit and Just a little bit of burnt sienna. Going over a bit of bit of grey now, bit of bit of nice grey. Right, now we've put some whitey clouds in. Mm -hmm. Burt Sienna.
Uh, that's not a bad sky. I need to paint down to uh, to those trees though. Right, I'll go back with that to paint grey. Dark ridge on the top there, that's a bit of white. Building up the layers. Oh, I want some reds now. Didn't like that. I'm going to go back with some darks in a moment.
Only just keep working away at it until you get something you like. <coughs> Let's get down into there. Right, let's just get a nice good bush in here. Someone's busy outside. Okay, well that's not too bad. Let's uh, move that away and take off the marketing team. It's good sticking the uh, your paper to to the board and, and using masking tape because if you haven't got an out for it, you've got a, it makes a frame. See that can be mounted uh, behind glass or in a mount. Well, not this particular one, it might not be good enough. Huh? But you can just carry on. So there it is, our camera's flickering this morning, I don't know why. She is flickering, is she? Oh, it's just enlarge. It, it does react to uh, movement. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I know. Ah, because every time I touch my board, I've, I've got my mic stand, which is a single stand with, with a, like a three legs at the bottom. I've got it attached to uh, my table. If I undo that, uh, I will do that later. Because so, every time I touch the board, it, the clip's clipped to the mic stand. I've got a big, one of those big... Uh, Oh, well, where's one? I don't know. But one of these with a, a, a thick elastic band around it clipped to my my table. Look, see? Uh, so I'm going to unclip it and just leave the mic stand attached to my my pull-out tray. Anyway, I hope you like that one, folks. I'll get it uh, photographed and I'll upload uh, the video. Let's just take that out. Alright, see you soon, bye bye.